three, three or four, or four years. years. About that. Uh, well, it's it was definitely kind of backwards. There was a, a producer and a and a person who wanted to manage this this uh, group and make a record and kind of grabbed us all from different projects and and. Uh, and we made the record before we even played a show. In fact, I don't think we played a show together till like the, the record had been done for. Oh, geez. Oh, the first album was real. Uh, it had a lot of soul influence and, and whatnot, and uh, there was a lot more improvisational kind of ideas and whatnot. And, th and this album's more songwriting oriented. It still gets kind of self-indulgent in times, but at times, but we can't really shake our our jazz heritage, I guess. You know? <laughs> This album is kind of the next logical step, it seems like uh, that's the way the band progressed. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that the, the, the first album gave us, um, like we worked with, with a guy named Joe Close, and he really helped us with, with, with confidence, and uh, we just took all of the knowledge that he kind of bestowed upon us, and, and we ran with it. And uh, so, that's it. So thus you have. <laughs> thus you have, deep down. Yeah. Formed in 1992, Citizen Swing began as an album project. Miles Kennedy, frontman for the band, had been singing in local television commercials and was winner of the 1992 Axeman Northwest Regional Guitar Competition. He was approached by producers Carolyn Lawson and Joe Close to start the Miles Kennedy Band. At the time, Miles was in a top 40 band called Moments Notice with drummer Mike Shergi and keyboardist Steve Haldy. Feeling uncomfortable, Miles said no to the band's name, but not the band. He began to write songs and bring in other musicians. Guitarist Craig Johnson, who studied music in college, bassist Dave Turner, attendee of the Groove School in L.A., and high school buddy Jeff Miller on the trumpet and congas. Soon they became Citizen Swing, and with the help of Carolyn and Joe, signed a deal with Wild and Scenic Records. With big money and personnel behind them, they released Cure Me with the Groove, the upbeat CD blended the band's talent with funk, jazz, pop, and soul. Ten months later, a deal was struck with Macola Records for national distribution. Despite the publicity, sales were moderate and the reviews were mixed. Soon after, Wild and Scenic Records dissolved, relieving the band from their contract. Starting fresh, Citizen Swing wrote songs and played numerous shows, which helped finance the next CD, Deep Down. Comparing the first two albums, we were the first one was a little more on the jazzy swing uh, sort of side, real slick, poppy album. And this one is uh, much more aggressive, pretty much straight ahead rock and roll. In early 96, before Deep Down was even released, Dave Turner left the group, citing family reasons. A couple months later, Nick Wiebe was chosen at an audition to be Citizen Swing's new bass player. Averaging 50 shows a year on the Northwest touring circuit, and racking up thousands in album sales, Citizen Swing is just happy to be on their own. Uh, at this point, I think, is that we really want to learn how it's done our... You know, again, we came from that... We came from a backwards um, thing, and, and it's like, uh, I think we just want to do it ourselves for now, and maybe later. You know, like I said, it's done off backwards, and when we, when we were put together, we had everything. We had a producer, we had management, we had record label and, and, and all this money and there was so much hype I'm not dissing on that it was it was great experience and I thank the people who helped us but but this time we just decided hey let's let's kind of do it ourselves self-release we pay for it's it it's on my visa right <laughs> <laughs> we're still paying for it the all day drives are you know are, uh, that's the roughest part of it and then there are times when, when you get you know, you'll drive seven or eight hours to a show and find out that the club is closed. <laughs> <laughs> and you drove seven or eight hours to go to a pizza hut, you know? So, that, that it's always of, an experience. It's, it's an experience. We learn a lot. As for playing live, though, it is absolutely the ultimate payoff. You know, the people out there are just totally are into it until they do it. It's great. There are some funny times that we, when we did the, uh, the camera box in black, <laughs> like, yeah. the lights went off. <laughs> guitar chords, he's on all fours. Crawling around on the stage in front of 4,000 people. Waiting for the lights to hit. Yeah, that spinal tap stuff yeah. happens all the time. We play at yeah. college once over in the Seattle area, 
in the cafeteria at lunchtime. <laughs> That's right. And That's great. They're walking by telling us that, well, we know it's fun for all you kids and everything, but can you turn it down because we're trying to study. <laughs> well, not to mention the PA they had set up for oh, us there. Geez. They're supposed to supp supply a PA, and it's just a little public address system. Exactly. You know? We're exactly like, what the heck are we supposed to do with this? You know, it's like you've had more wonderful experiences. I can tell you.